Hello everyone, and welcome to this video going over Behavior Interactive's newest game, Death Garden. Everything I'm about to say and show you guys is footage from the Alpha in May. So this does not reflect the complete and finalized version of the game. There are many things that are subject to change, but I know that the core mechanics that are staying the same are in this. It's a 1v5 asymmetrical shooter game, with the one side being a hunter with a first person camera, and the five side being the runners with a third person camera. I will show you guys the two sides in a minute here, but first I just want to show you the main menu and what the interface is like when you first enter the game. So right now I'm on the main menu screen. You can see there are three options, the play, settings, and quit to desktop. So let's check out the settings here first. We have basic graphic quality that you click on. The max is four and then it goes down three, two, one. You have resolution, windowed mode. You can change basic full screen and stuff. Audio options, and then we have some basic control options, sensitivity options, just your basic general game options. Now you notice the key bindings is grayed out. You can only change the key bindings when you're in the lobby as the specific role. So if we go to play here, you can see you can choose the hunter or the runner. Mouse over the runner, it says your abilities are and what the three classes are of the runner. You can read what those are about. And then when you mouse over the hunter, again, you see what abilities are available as of now and a small little description of the role. So let's check out the runner first. So if I click runner, we are in this lobby area where we can run around, move the camera, test out the controls. You can just run around this area, jump on these things, get used to like the climbing and all that. We have the matchmaking station there. Now let's take a look at the key bindings. So here we can actually see the controls for the runner roll on both the keyboard and gamepad. So I'm showing you the default controls right now. You are able to remap these to whatever key you feel is most comfortable for that action. If you're wondering what the comms action is, it's basically just a quick in-game chat. Your runner will just automatically say something like, I need more ammo, or I need to be healed. Then just running around. You can hold down the space bar to continuously run up. If you just jump on a wall, you will cling to it for a second and fall down if you let go of the space bar. So that's just me clicking space bar, jumping up, and then letting go of space bar right away. To aim, you just hold down right mouse, and then to shoot, you do left. There's me crouching. The crouching is a toggle, so you have to... Press the button again to get up. And then now let's check out the hunter roll. So click on hunter, we get the same kind of area. It looks like the runner area. Testing out the jumping. You also can look around. That's the zoom aim. Let's check out their key bindings. So again, most of the controls are the same with concerns to crouching and jumping and movement. But you notice here we have a power ability, a supercharge. There's your reload, and they also have a melee on like the runners. And there's several emotes. Runners have emotes too. So now I'm just going to cycle through some of the emotes for you guys to see. Very interesting, it goes into a third person camera for you to see your emotes.
And each emote is assigned to a specific key. I don't remember which keys I was pressing when I did those emotes, but very basic. And there's my turret ability, which is F. Left alt is this turbo boost, which you run faster and you can jump higher. And then the two icons next to my abilities are my perks, which you cannot access your perks in this lobby screen here. These are the weapons I have equipped right now, it's the assault rifle and shotgun. I'm just shooting them, seeing how they feel. Then this is the matchmaking. You can sign up for a match. So now that we have seen what the lobby-like areas are in that, let's take a look at some actual gameplay. Starting with the runners again, I am in the lobby and then I just queue up for the match. And then when I get into the match is when you can actually choose your class as well as what perks you want to equip. The three classes are Support, Torment, or Control. And then at the bottom here we have our different kinds of perks. You can only equip two. So on the left here we have an Agility perk, and then in the middle we have our Protection perks. And then you can see to the right there are Environment perks that are locked. So we will get a lot of perk options in the future. Once you have selected what you want, you just wait around for the game to start. On the top there you can see the hunter has joined and how many runners have joined and who you're waiting to join. If you wish to change your perks or class before the game has started, you can just go to this little console that's in the middle of the room and interact with it and change your class or your perks accordingly. Once the lobby has been filled, it will say the game is ready to start and there will be a countdown timer. Then the arena will be generated before you and you can even watch it, which is really cool. Then once the arena generates, you'll get another countdown timer before you can actually enter the arena. As soon as the door is open, the runners can jump down, and you have 15 seconds until the hunter enters the arena. During this time, the runners have to try and gather as much supplies as they can, and maybe figure out where the capture points are as well. Runners can mark objects and points by shooting at them with their arrows, and what this does is grant you MPI, which is the resource you use in order to cast your special abilities. Once you reach max MPI, you cannot go over the line and you're just capped out. So the supplies runners need to gather are these blue boxes that will award them upgrade parts. And these upgraded parts are used to unlock runner abilities, because as you see here, you only have access to one ability. Once you get an upgrade part, you can interact with one of these consoles here and unlock some abilities. As you can see, they each cost one upgrade part. The abilities you are able to get from the upgrade console will be determined upon your class. Runners have various abilities such as being able to heal teammates, stun the hunter, or mark the hunter and reveal their aura to everyone in the game. So you can see how Getting good class synergy can really help a team succeed. There is also a specific kind of music that plays as the hunter approaches your area, so keep an ear out for that music because it is an alert to the hunter is coming. Additionally, the hunter's footsteps are really loud and you can hear him coming really easily. Here's an example of what the hunter music sounds like as well as the music growing in intensity as the hunter gets closer. You are revealed. Point 
Now the main objective of the runners is to capture two of the three capture points. And while capturing these points, you are awarded with MPI to fuel your abilities. Once they have captured two of these points, the exits will be open and the runners can escape. But three runners must escape in order to get a win. If the hunter kills three runners before three runners can escape, then the hunter will win. So that brings us to how does the hunter kill the runners? Well, there is a thing called the blood post. When the hunter has downed three runners, and it can be the same runner three times or different runners each time, it doesn't matter. If a runner has been down three times, then the third time they go down, they will be able to be sent to the blood post. When they are sent to the blood post, the hunter can execute them. Now, the torment class can stun the hunter and allow for a save to occur. Or if the hunter is not nearby the blood post, you can just save the person that's on it. When the person has been saved or executed, the blood post charges will reset and the hunter will have to down another three survivors in order to activate it. Now, the hunter can also get kills by having a runner bleed out. And if a runner falls off a cliff. Now, if the runner falls off the cliff, when there is at least one charge in the blood post, then they will be sent to the blood post instead of dying. But if the blood post is not close to being full, or the blood post is already occupied, then that runner will just automatically die. For a bit of randomness added into the arena, there are occasionally arena events. In this alpha, the only event was infinite ammo, and basically you had to find a golden crate somewhere on the map, and if you got it, you would get infinite ammo for your team. As a runner, you do not know the location of this golden crate, but if you get close enough to where the golden crate is, you will see this symbol appear. So you basically have to search the map for this golden crate. The hunter, on the other hand, gets an indication of where the crate is right away, so they have the advantage in finding the crate. Whoever gets the crate first and opens it up is the team that gets the buff. Hunter has activated the golden crate. Runners are very agile, but you go down very quickly to a hunter in a few shots if you get hit. So you have to utilize your high movement to avoid the hunter's shots. Runners can climb up walls and trees and easily maneuver around a hunter. You also have an evade key, which lets your runner roll in one direction in order to avoid an attack. So you must use your mobility along with your abilities to prevent yourself from going down to the hunter. And that sums it up for our runners. Point a completed. Now let's take a look at the Hunter class. The Hunter doesn't have specific classes, but you do have guns to choose from. Right now, there are only three gun options, which are the Shotgun, Assault Rifle, and Sniper Rifle. As for your secondary ability, you can choose a turret or a mine. And then for perks, we have a variety of perks here that you can choose from. As with runners, you can only equip two perks at a time. As the hunter, you can see in the above as well how many runners are in the lobby at the moment, and you can also change your loadout at the console in the middle of the room. Now once the runners have been released, you must wait 15 seconds before you can enter the arena. Once you do enter the arena, you will notice that there is a lot of supply boxes around. All of these boxes basically act in the same way to you as they do to the runners. For the yellow boxes, you get ammo. 
The blue boxes will give you a random upgrade, and the health boxes, basically, you deny the runners the ability to use them. You do not need to upgrade your stuff at the consoles like the runners, your stuff just upgrades automatically. And your objective as the hunter is to prevent the runners from capturing two of the points and then getting to the exit gates. In order to kill runners, this thing called the blood post is available to you. Now, since I explained this already before on the runner side, I won't get too into it. I'm just gonna say again, you need to down runners three times in order to get the blood post to full, and then you will have that execute option available to you once the runner is put on the blood post. Runners will be able to perform saves on the runner who is in the blood post, so you have to make sure you guard that blood post a little. And torment runners can stun you to prevent you from executing a runner, and then they can perform a save while you are stunned. And if you happen to shoot a runner off the edge, you will get two points in your blood post instead of just one. Once you have used the blood post to execute someone, or even if they don't get executed but rescued instead, you must down three runners again in order to reactivate the blood post. The hunter is definitely a lot less agile than the runners because you are wearing all that heavy armor and stomping around. You cannot easily climb up the very large cliffs, so you will often either have to find an alternate route to get up there, or you will have to supercharge yourself so that you can jetpack up the cliff edge. You must be careful though because, as I said earlier, the supercharge shares a cooldown with your melee which stuns runners. And being able to stun runners is very important because it can help you catch them. And that is about it for the hunter role. It is definitely more simple than the runner role. At least it is for now. So that is Death Garden, everyone. Tell me what you think about the game in the comments below if you look forward to it and if you think you would be interested in this kind of game. I know when I played this game I had a lot of fun as the runner, but I did not have that much fun as the hunter. Mostly because first person shooters are not my thing and my aim is terrible, but with the runners I find it a lot easier to aim. Plus. You get a nice AoE, so you don't have to be super precise on your shots. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video informative, and I hope to see you next time. There will be more Death Garden videos coming soon.